In this example problem, we're going to calculate the shear capacity of a, a given section using ACI 318 Simplified, uh, ACI 318 Detailed Procedures for Pre-Stressed Concrete, and the AASHTO LRFD General Procedure. The, uh, this is a, um, the design that we're going to look at is from a series of simply supported pre-stressed beams that were tested at the University of Texas at Austin. And we're going to look at um, a specific beam that had two different failure types, um, one being flexure shear and one being uh, web crushing, where we had crushing of the concrete um, in our web and flexure shear, where we had one of our flexure cracks uh, becoming a shear crack and uh, getting that uh, S-type failure. The test setup was a simply supported um, test setup with a point load applied 120 inches uh, from the uh, right support. Um, so you can see we had a test span where shear was critical uh, and a back span where we uh, did not expect failure to happen. Um, we measured loads and um, displacements and uh, some strains uh, in, our, uh, in our beam. Our section properties and material properties are shown on this slide. Um, so we have different section properties at the end of our section and at mid-span um, because we had harped uh, or draped strands. Uh, you do this in pre-stressed concrete to minimize your end region stresses by um, moving the centroid uh, of your pre-stressing strands um, closer to the centroid of your overall section as, as you near the end of your section. Um, so you can see that the uh, location of our strands, YP, changes um, and is uh, higher at the ends than it is at mid-span. Um, we also have a different amount of shear reinforcement at the ends uh, versus uh, the, the mid-span the, through the rest of the beam. And uh, this is because um, normally we put extra reinforcement in the ends of the members um, to resist bursting and spalling stresses that are caused by uh, pre-stressing forces. Um, so you can see our, our other section properties. Um, these are all uh, gross section properties for our section. Um, so we'll use them moving forward. Uh, these beams did not have a cast in, pl uh, a cast in place deck. Um, so we only uh, are using our gross section properties here. Um, but I'll, I'll try to highlight throughout the problem what would change um, if we had a cast in place deck. You can also see our material properties. Uh, we have our measured uh, release and measured 28 day strengths and then also our, our measured strength on uh, the test day. Uh, we're going to use um, uh, KSI here in, in, in inches, uh, so we'll uh, be in this left column. Uh, we also have our um, properties for our shear reinforcement and our pre-stressing strands. Um, so we'll need those uh, throughout the example as well. Shown here are uh, the elevation views for our section. Um, the first is showing the, cent the center of gravity of our strands. Uh, so we had some strands that were harped and uh, some strands that remained uh, straight throughout the whole section. Um, you can see where our harping point is, um, 60 inches from uh, our mid-span. Um, and by changing the centroid of uh, some of the strands, we can change the overall centroid of our strands, um, which we looked at on the previous slide. Uh, you can also see the denser um, or, or the larger amount of reinforcement located uh, within the ends of the uh, ends of the member. Um, so we have uh, a tighter spacing, three inches versus um, six inches, uh, for our R bars, which are in this case, are our uh, shear reinforcement. And uh, those are located within the last uh, 36 inches of the beam. The first thing that we're going to do is we'll calculate our shear using the ACI simplified shear procedure for uh, pre-stressed concrete members. Um, here we'll need, um, our, our, our VC is equal to the minimum of these three VC expressions. Uh, so V sub or V sub C A, V sub C B, V sub C C. Um, in the code, these are organized in a table. Um, I'm separating separating them out into separate equations uh, just for uh, our simplicity here. Um, so one thing that we also know is that our um, shear span for um, beams with a point load is just equal to our 
moment uh, m sub u divided by v sub u. Uh, so we're going to substitute in um, this a for our m sub u over v sub u, um, just so that we um, don't need to calculate our shear in moments yet. Um, and we know from our loading scheme that our a is equal to 120 inches. All right, so uh, plugging in these values, we'll get uh, our v sub c um, expression a to be um, 0 0.6 times 1.0. Um, our lambda is our uh, lightweight concrete factor. Um, so we have normal weight concrete, so we'll have um, a 1.0 there. Uh, square root, um, 9,600 PSI. Uh, plus 700 times 37.5 divided by 120. Uh, sorry, not um, times our B sub W. So our web width um, is seven inches here, uh, and our D here is uh, thirty-seven point five. Um, so we'll get a V sub C A here to be um, seventy-two. Oops. Uh, 72.9 kips. Then we'll have 0 0.6 times 1 uh, times the square root of 9600 PSI um, plus 700 uh, times 7 inches times 37.5 um, which will give us 199.2 uh, kips. And then finally, we'll have 5 um, times 1.0 uh, times the square root of 9,600 PSI times 7 inches times 37.5, uh, which will give us a value of 128 um, 0.6 kips. So we can see here that the minimum of these is 72.9. So our V sub C here is 72.9 kips. Uh, what will change if we have a cast in place deck is our D is going to go um, from the, it's going to be the depth of our composite section. Um, so we'll need to add in the thickness of our composite deck here um, when using our D. All right, so then we can also calculate our um, steel uh, component here. So our uh, AV, we have um, two number four bars. Um, our steel is 60 KSI steel. Our D is 37.5 inches. And our spacing um, within our, our shear span or at our, our section of interest is six inches. Um, so this will be equal to 150 kips. And uh, this is limited by uh, eight um, times our, our lambda, uh, one here times the square root of 9,600 PSI times 7 inches times 37.5, um, which is equal to 176.4 kips. So um, we can see that 150 is less than 176.4. Um, so our steel contribution is 150. Um, this 176.4 uh, ensures that we don't have crushing of our concrete um, uh, before our, our steel yields, essentially. Or, uh, um, yeah, the, if, if you want to know more about that, you can look in, in, the, uh, in my video explaining um, the ACI steel contribution. Um, but we want to uh, prevent... Um, crushing of our concrete um, within our, our truss analogy. 
so here then we have our total shear resistance is uh, 72.9 kips uh, plus 150 kips, uh, which will give us 223 kips. So this is our uh, our answer for our um, ACI simplified shear, or using the ACI simplified shear method. We're next going to use the uh, ACI 318 detailed shear method for pre-stressed concrete members. Um, and this method takes V sub C equal to uh, the minimum of V sub C I, um, our kind of flexor shear capacity, and V sub C W, our web shear capacity. Uh, so we'll have um, our V sub C I is the maximum of these two equations, and our V sub C W is equal to uh, this expression here. Um, so in order to find uh, our V sub C I and V sub C W, uh, we will need to find our moment and shear. Um, and we're going to find the uh, moment and shear um, at, at the section of, of interest. Um, so for us, we're going to find these things at our critical section. Uh, which is a distance d from the face of our support. Uh, we're not given any information about um, our support condition, so we're going to take our d measured from the um, center of our right support. So we can find um, the shear and uh, the moment um, at this location at our critical section um, at, as shown here. Uh, we're going to um, or the other thing that I'll note is uh, our known failure load is uh, 720 kips, and this is um, you know from our, our experimental testing. Um, but you know it, if you were designing, then you would use your uh, factored um, design load here. Uh, so we also have our or we're going to assume that we're neglecting self weight um, just for simplicity, <laughs> just so we're dealing with just the point load. Um, in an actual design, you would also need to include self-weight. Uh, but if we neglect self-weight, we can calculate our um, V sub I and uh, M max components. Um, so equal to 540 and uh, 20,500 respectively. So we use these values moving forward. Another value that we'll need for our um, detailed shear expressions is the cracking moment. Uh, and this will be the uh, externally applied moment caused to crack the beam. Um, so for this, we can sum uh, all of our stress components. So all of our uh, axial and flexural stresses, all of uh, our P over A and M Y over I um, uh, components and set it equal to the tensile strength of our concrete. Um, in this case, ACI uses the tensile strength of the concrete as a uh, um, six square root F prime C. So if we uh, use this expression and solve for uh, M uh, cracking, then uh, we can plug in all of our known values and uh, solve for our, our cracking moment. Um, note that because we're neglecting the self weight, um, we lose this last term. Uh, but in an actual design, you would also need to include uh, the self weight of the structure. All right. So then we're ready to um, plug all these values in and calculate our, our V sub CI. Uh, so we'll have 0. 0.6 times our lambda uh, times square root of 9,600 PSI uh, times 7 inches uh, times 37.5, which is our D. And then um, we add in, we're neglecting our self weight, um, but we need to add in our last component. So uh, 540 kips uh, times our cracking moment, uh, 36,900 kip inches divided by 20,500 kip inches. Um, so this will give us a um, V sub C I for the A expression of uh, 988 kips. 
our other expression here uh, will have 1.7 uh, times 1.0 um, times the square root of 9,600 psi um, times 7 inches times 37.5 um, will give us a, a value here of 43.7 kips. Uh, we can see that we're going with the max of these two. Um, so 988 is our max. So our V sub C I here is 988 kips. So next we'll need to uh, calculate our web shear capacity, which we'll do on the next slide. Um, and just a, another note here, um, remember that we use PSI um, with ACI. And in all of these calculations, um, I'm dividing by um, 1,000 kips or 1,000 pounds per kip um, to give us uh, our units of kips here. Now we'll calculate our web shear capacity. And uh, we'll need to calculate a, a couple different components before we can find our, our VCW. Uh, the first one is we need to find this uh, F sub PC. And this is the compressive stress in the concrete uh, after allowance for all pre-stress losses at the centroid of the cross section resisting externally applied loads. Um, so what that breaks down to is if you have a non-composite section, um, it's just going to be equal to your um, your pre-stress or your pre-stressing force after losses divided by your gross area. And if you have a composite section, then you also have um, or you need to take into account uh, a M, MY over I stress component um, that occurs because of the uh, difference between the, the centroid of your um, gross section and the centroid of your um, your composite section with your deck. For us, um, we have a non-composite section, um, so our uh, F sub PC is just equal to our pre-stressing force after all losses, uh, which is equal to um, 1,268 kips, uh, divided by our gross area, 761. Uh, so our stress component here is uh, 1.67 KSI. The other thing that we'll need for our uh, VCW is we'll need a, a vertical um, or the vertical component of our pre-stressing force. And uh, this is called V sub P. Um, so we'll know our theta P based on our strand geometry. Uh, so we know that our strands are, are sloped because uh, we, have, we have harped strands and we had a, a different um, strand eccentricity or strand location at the ends versus the middle. Um, and then we have a, a distance between the um, end of the beam and the point, um, our harping point. Uh, so we can find our, our theta here um, to be one degree. So our strands have a one degree slope. And then we'll just find our V sub P component is equal to our uh, pre-stressing force after all of our pre-stressing losses um, times sine one degree. And uh, we'll get that equal to uh, 22.1 kips. So after we have these different values, then we can plug them into our V sub C W expression. Um, so we'll have three and a half um, times 1.0 times 9,600 PSI plus 0 0.3 times 1,670 PSI times 7 inches times 37.5 plus 22.1 kips. Um, and we're dividing all this by 1,000 um, pounds per kip. Uh, so you can see, um, make sure that your units are consistent. So because we have PSI over here, we need to have PSI here. Um, and then we're dividing by 1,000 pounds per kip outside of everything to, to convert it to um, kips. But we'll get our, our V sub CW component to be uh, 243 kips. So we can see um, our V sub C is the minimum of our V sub CI and our V sub CW. 
Uh, so our v sub c w is the minimum here. So our v sub c component is going to be 243 kips. Our vs is the same um, as before. So uh, still 150 kips. So then we can find our total um, shear resistance is 243 plus 150, uh, which will be equal to 390 three kips. Uh, so this is our um, total shear resistance using the uh, ACI 318 detailed shear method for uh, pre-stressed concrete members. The last method that we're going to use is the AASHTO LRFD general procedure, um, which can be used for either um, pre-stressed or non-pre-stressed members. Um, normally, when you're doing a shear design, um, you'll come to your shear design and analysis after you've already done uh, your flexural design. Um, so that means that you'll already have the uh, flexural strength of the member and you'll also already have the uh, depth of your compression block C and uh, and also the, the um, average stress in the pre-stressing at nominal strength, um, F sub PS. Um, so AASHTO requires these values in calculating the shear. Um, so I'm going to assume that we already did our flexure design and just give us our different values. Uh, so the flexural strength for our section is 79,100 kip inches, and the average stress in our pre-stressing at the nominal strength, um, so the, the stress in the pre-stressing when our section fails is uh, equal to 237.3 KSI. So using these, we can find our effective shear depth um, which we'll need for calculating our shear strength. Um, so it's just equal to our uh, MN divided by uh, ASFY plus APS FPS. Uh, we don't have any non-pre-stressed steel, um, so we only have our pre-stressed steel. So we can find our uh, D sub V to be 37.6. Um, there's also a note that this effective shear depth need not be taken less than the greater of 0.8 d sub e and 0.72 h. So we can find our d sub e uh, just equal to this expression here. Um, again, we don't have any um, non-pre-stressed steel. Um, so only including our pre-stressed steel, we'll get our d sub e to be 37.5. And then 0.9 of this would be 33.75. Then um, 0.72 times our height would give us 33.1. So the um, greater of these two is 33.75, um, but our 37.6 is greater than that, so that's going to be our dv moving forward. The um, other value that we'll need is uh, what's called fp not, uh, FP not um, which is uh, specified just to be 0.7 times f sub pu um, for usual levels of pre-stressing. And uh, this is for both pre-tensioned and post-tensioned members. So for us, we'll have um, this value equal to 189 KSI. Uh, also, um, we're going to look at the shear at the same section that we've been looking at for ACI. Um, so we calculated before our M sub U and uh, V sub U. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so we calculated before our moment and our shear. Um, so we'll just use those now. And uh, last, we need our um, V sub P component, um, so our vertical pre-stressing component. Uh, the difference between AASHTO and ACI is that um, AASHTO uses uh, FPS um, to find the pre-stressing force. Um, so they use the pre-stressing force um, at nominal strength um, versus ACI, which uses the pre-stressing force um, after all losses are uh, taken out. Uh, so here we'll have the same angle as before, um, but our force changes. Um, so our vertical component is now um, 36.8 kips. Uh, so we'll use this moving forward. Now that we have all these different values, we're uh, ready to find the, the strain at the level of our pre-stressing. Um, so this strain we use to find out how effective the concrete is at resisting shear 
and also we use it to find um, the, ang the angle of our um, compression stresses, which is also the angle of our, our cracks. Uh, so we can plug into our um, epsilon s expression from uh, Ashto, and um, so just m mu divided by dv uh, plus 0.5 nu, so we don't have any axial load, so that component's out, um, plus the absolute value of v sub u minus v sub p uh, minus our pre-stressing um, force, and then divided by um, we don't have any steel, so only uh, E sub PS times uh, A sub PS. Uh, so we'll find here that our strain uh, at the centroid of our pre-stressing strands is negative. And this means that our strain here is in compression. Uh, so positive is tension and negative is compression. Uh, there's a note that if our strain is negative, um, then we need to add in kind of the, the stiffness component of our concrete, since our concrete won't be uh, cracked yet. Um, so we'll need here the A sub CT. And this is specified as the area of concrete on the flexural tension side of the member. Um, so from a, a figure given in the code, we can see that that includes all the area of concrete um, that's under uh, the half uh, or 0.5 h point, um, so half of our height. So this shaded region. Um, so you can use AutoCAD or um, just approximate the area. Um, so for this section, our A sub CT is around um, 450 uh, inches squared. So we'll use that value. Um, then we're given before an EC uh, equal to 5,585 KSI. So we'll use that. Um, we can add this, nothing changes in our numerator. We only have the, the change here in our um, denominator. So we add in, in that component and uh, we'll see then our um, strain decreases to uh, negative 0 0.00022. Um, we can check to make sure that we're uh, within our acceptable range for epsilon s. Uh, we are here, so um, this will be our strain moving forward. We can next calculate our beta. So our beta is going to be equal to um, 4.8 divided by 1 plus 750 times negative 0 0.000022. Uh, um, so we'll get our beta here to be equal to 5.8. And uh, we'll use this um, on the next slide to find our, our concrete, um, our concrete uh, component to the shear strength. We can now use our strain epsilon s to find our angle of compression um, in degrees. Uh, so our angle of compression is uh, 29 plus 3500 times negative. 0.00022, um, and this will be equal to uh, 28 degrees, um, or 0.49 radians. Uh, we can then plug in, in our beta and find our V sub C component, so uh, 0.0316 uh, times our beta, which we found to be 5.8 on the previous slide. Um, times the square root of 9.6 KSI uh, times 7 inches times 37.6 uh, will give us a V sub C component of 149 or 149 kips. Um, so note here uh, that our uh, F prime C in, in uh, Ashto we're using a KSI. Um, and then we'll get kips directly out of this expression. Uh, so then we can calculate our V sub S component. So we have uh, 2 times 0.2 times 60 KSI uh, times 37.6 inches times the cotangent of 28 degrees divided by 
six inches will give us a, a V sub S equal to 280 kips. We can then uh, combine all of our shear resistance components. Uh, so we'll have 149 plus 280 uh, plus our V sub P, which we found before, 36.8. Um, and we'll get a total resistance here of 466 kips. Uh, so this will be our shear resistance, our total shear resistance um, using the Ashto LRFD general procedure. Finally, we can compare um, our failure shear to um, our estimated capacity uh, to see how well each of these um, estimation procedures performs. Uh, so you can see that the specimen, um, they failed around 540 kips. So if we look at our uh, ACI simplified, um, we are dramatically underestimating the estimated capacity. Uh, so it is conservative, but uh, um, excessively so. Uh, we have our ACI detailed expression, which uh, gets us a little closer. Um, so we're only um, overestimating our capacity by about 37%. Or 37%. And then we have our uh, ASHTO detailed method, um, which gets us is still conservative and is uh, uh, more accurate. So that concludes uh, this example uh, problem.